a lot of people it is. The great Rush Limbaugh here used to always remind us that it was all entertainment. I didn't quite agree with that. I have always believed in the power of media to shape what men and women think. Mm. So it was something a lot more than that. In Australia at the moment, and you might not know, but we're going through a lot of, um, I want to say destabilization, but I don't want to get too political. Well, we're going through a lot of changes, a lot of potential changes. And um, one of the things that we're going to have to think about pretty quickly is our constitution. Now, in Australia, we have a constitution. I read through it. It's um, not like the American constitution. It's it's a lot smaller in scope, and it wasn't created from a conflict. It was more created out of necessity in that, um, well, we have these uh, five or six states, these colonies of Britain, and, you know... Um, how are we going to deal with an army? I mean, we can't raise an army ourselves that's big enough to do anything, so maybe we should have uh, come together and create an army that way. What about international trade? What about the money system? All these sorts of questions were the things that brought the states in Australia together to form a constitution. So as a consequence, it is a very light document, and it simply talks about... Um, who ha who has what powers, um, things about taxation. Um, there's really nothing like, say, the, uh, the Bill of Rights. Um, I think the only clause in it that has any direct implication to the people is that we have a, a, a clause where it says that government are prohibited from establishing or enforcing a religion and then there should be no religious tests for office. Um, so it's similar to uh, part of your First Amendment. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You were going to say well, something? Remember that the, the Bill of Rights was a, a later add-on yeah. to the Constitution because there were a number of representatives in 1789 that really believed that, or was it 1787, sorry, um, that... They, they, they weren't strong enough, and they wanted to put in absolutes there, you know, freedom of religion, mm -hmm. freedom of the press, freedom to bear arms, uh, right to be secure in your person's papers and possessions, no double jeopardy, uh, no being forced to testify against yourself, habeas corpus, they couldn't hold you indefinitely without charging you or releasing you. A very and because this is all these were all the things that King George had done to the colonists here. Mm. And they just wanted to put those in there. And as I've said, it's a firewall. Um, you know, it's, it's a one-way wall. It's a prohibition upon government from encroaching. And, of course, today that's what government is doing, nothing but, yep. but encroaching all over the place. So let's, let's back up. And the historical context of um, the U.S. Constitution, can you sort of help us Australians and anyone listening understand what was the historical context that gave rise to the to the original uh, signing of the U.S. Constitution. And I commend you that you didn't say, we Australians. So, <laughs> an object of a sentence that you would help us Australians. Um, the context that happened, obviously, the British Empire extended over quite a bit of the world. Australia, New Zealand, what were the colonies here, including Canada, both the U.S. and Canada, and um, I'm trying to think of something else. I know I, I missed something in my mind there. Sorry, it's late in our day here. Um, and we had been part of the British Empire uh, for a long time, for several centuries, between, say, about 1620. And finally, we achieved independence. The Declaration of Independence was signed in 1776. So it's interesting that there were whole generations of people that had grown up here that were British subjects, but they'd never been to Great Britain, you know. Um, and what began to happen through various uh, means is that the tensions between Parliament in Great Britain and the colonists in the United States just grew and grew and grew uh, until the colonists felt that they were being badly abused, that they were not properly represented in Parliament, which is where we came up with the no taxation without representation. 
And I guess the straw that broke the camel's back was the uh, tea tax that the British Parliament at the time put on tea, and what British subject doesn't drink tea, right? Uh, and that resulted in what became to be known as the Boston Tea Party, where they, in Boston, they went down and they took this whole shipload of tea and threw it in Boston Harbor. Um, I don't know if they had fortune tellers that could read harbors at the time, uh, but that might have been worth it. But uh, that was what kicked it off, and then the British decided to crack down. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Benjamin Franklin, for 10 years, had been doing shuttle diplomacy between, you know, across the ocean, and it took, what, three three months to get across, I can't remember, six weeks to three months, depending on the winds, and trying to get Parliament to give them some concessions. And it didn't work. Uh, Parliament just became more and more arrogant about the Americans. I think they saw them as second-class citizens. And finally, at that point, the colonies, 13 of them, got together and said, okay, that's enough. We're declaring our independence from Great Britain. And in doing that, by the way, they were actually laying the groundwork, as I told a friend of mine from New Zealand when we were talking about White Pangy Day. I said, well, you know why the Crown didn't put up a fuss about New Zealand getting home rule. And he said, no, why? And I said, because the United States had done your heavy lifting for you. We'd fought the British twice in 1776 and in the War of 1812. Uh, and by that time, the Crown was running out of money and they just weren't up for another battle with Australia, <laughs> New Zealand, Canada, you know. Uh, and, but all of those countries remain Commonwealth countries, whereas we were the only ones that I can think of that became really independent, maybe aside from South Africa, because it was a mixture of Boers and, and British subjects, etc. So that's sort of the background. It's, you know, you can go into a lot of that. Uh, it was born in rebellion. People had just finally said, that's enough. And it was also influenced by two things. Number one was the Protestant Reformation, uh, remembering that the Reformation became something unique in England that it really wasn't in the rest of the continent. And people began to realize that we've got to stop killing each other over our different Christian beliefs, even within Protestant sects like Puritans who really wanted to go back to the pure gospel. The Anglicans wanted to reform a bit but re retain most of what uh, the Roman Church had been, you know, dealt with in liturgy and practice. And so that played a major role in the ideas of freedom of speech and freedom of religion. The second set of ideas were those of Rousseau and of Voltaire, which ultimately resulted in the French Revolution. They were different ideas, and our founders, you know, Jefferson was a big fan of this, Thomas Jefferson, who wrote the Declaration of Independence, which is a marvelous piece of philosophical treaty, reflecting the philosophical thought of the time. But we rejected that, and thankfully we did because the French Revolution started out by saying there is no God, God's totally out, and if we just let the gentle citizen come out, the problem with mankind is religion, and if we took off the religious suppression, then everything would be fine. Well, after they got done taking the lid off, how, what, how many, 30,000 people died of the guillotine, being drowned, shot, uh, as a result of the French Revolution, and every Marxist revolution ever since then that was the granddaddy of all Marxist revolutions. The American settlers rejected that. They started with the idea that it had to be founded on a belief in God for its moral system, but that also mankind had an innate sense of evil. In other words, the gospel tells us what? Every man's heart is dark, right? It, it's evil. It does no good. There's nothing righteous before God. And so they understood that powers had to be broken up. This was a whole new experiment. And so they created a, a, a legislative branch in the Congress, and there was a, an executive branch under the president, and then the judicial branch to arbitrate, and each of the branches was equal uh, and could offset the other. It was an attempt to divide this power up. So in the history of the world, it's a rather unique experiment. Now, I'm not sure it's going to succeed or last, but we'll see. Well, I think the famous quote was, Someone asked someone that you would probably know what type of Benjamin government. Benjamin Franklin, yeah. Yeah, what type of government have you given us? And he said, a republic, if you can keep it. Right.